video is going to be bifurcated a little bit faster. I'll just show you how to get this polybar mod working. Uh, and then from there, we'll talk a little bit more about how it actually works and some additional customization and other things about the module in general. Um, so to start with, uh, what you're going to need is a YouTube API key. You could use uh, some sort of curl method uh, to pull this data. But if what you're trying to do is get some sort of data from a YouTube channel, YouTube has a way to do it. They have a system in place to give API keys to anyone with a Google account. So you can just pull whatever data you want and put it into whatever kind of app you want. And that's exactly what we've done here. So first thing you need to do is head over to the GitHub repo that's in the link, github.com slash Mac slash PYT. Scroll down just a little bit, see this thing right here. This module requires a YouTube API key. Click on YouTube API key. Makes sense, right? Then what you wanna do is you want to go over to the Google Developers Console. If you don't have a Google account, make one. Uh, and then from there, uh, you're just gonna wanna go over to Credentials and you're going to click right up here, Create Credentials. Uh, you're gonna click on API key and then it is literally just gonna give you an API key. I can show you this here because I'm just gonna delete it and there's really not that big of a danger of someone else having your API key. They can just use it in their project and run out your available like requests or something. So it's really not that big of a deal. This is the API key right here. Uh, one other thing you very well might have to do is come over here to the library section and then you're just gonna search for uh, YouTube and find YouTube data API v3 and uh, just make sure that that is enabled. If it's not, it'll say enable right here. If it is, it'll say manage. Once you've done that, copy that API key and we can go ahead and download the uh, script. So come back over to the GitHub page, scroll down a bit to the installation instructions and it'll say download yt subcount.zip. Go ahead, open that bad boy up, take you to the releases page. Here's the zip file right here. Go ahead and download that. And once you have it, you're going to want to come into a terminal or a, a file explorer. Uh, I mean, you can use whatever you want here. This is pcmanfm here. And if we come over to the downloads, you can see this is the zip file right here. Uh, I just kind of prefer to do things on the terminal. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cd into downloads. If we look right here, this is the zip file. So all we need to do is do unzip yt.zip. If you don't have that program, if you're on Arch Linux, you might. You can do sudo pacman s and install unzip. Hit yes. And then we're gonna do unzip yt.zip. Beautiful. We took a look in a file manager. Now we have this zip file, which we don't need anymore, and a folder with api.txt and sub.py right inside of it. Uh, from that point, the GitHub repo is actually sort of set up in a way that you could literally just copy and paste the commands. So what you need to do is basically copy over the api.txt and the sub.py into your config directory for Polybar. So we can go ahead and just literally click right here, copy that text and put it in there. And then if we cd into our config slash Polybar, what you'll see now is we have an api.txt file and a sub.py Python script. Now, there's a decent chance that you might have to go ahead and make this sub.py script executable. Uh, so what you need to do there is chmod plus x and run sub.py. That will just make sure that when you click on the script, when you try to run the script through Polybar, it will actually execute. That is important. Then what you wanna do is in this api.txt file, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add your API key. Uh, you just paste it in as plain text. You can use whatever uh, editor you're a fan of. Uh, you can do something like gedit and then open up api.txt and you'll be able to literally just paste in your API key. From there, uh, all we need to do is actually edit the sub.py script and then the polybar config. So we can go ahead and open up the sub.py script. Again, you can use something like gedit if that's what you're a fan of. Uh, I personally am just a big, big fan of Vim. So I'm just gonna open it up in there. And there are basically two things we need to update here. We need to insert the username of the channel that we want to be pulling data for. And we need to insert the path to our api.txt file, slash home, slash whatever your username is. Mine is Mac. Uh, and then the next part, you're just gonna do dot config slash polybar slash API dot text. Perfect. Now we just need to insert the username of the channel that we wanna pull data from. So we come into here and we just literally type in the username. If you don't know, uh, probably the easiest way to get a YouTube channel username. So let's uh, go and find a, a good channel that I wanna send people to here. Let's see, what do we got here? This guy here, tips, 
from a shipwright. I have a, a weird affinity for watching people build ships. So we're gonna copy his username. If you go to the YouTube channel, uh, usually it's gonna look something like youtube.com slash user slash this bit right here is their YouTube username. Go ahead and copy that. Then we're going to want to come back over to that username and just paste in that bit that we just found. Go ahead and write those changes and quit. And now we need to edit the actual config for Polybar. Again, use whatever app you like. And there are a couple of things that we need to do here. The first of which is we actually need to install the source code pro font to enable the glyph that we're using up here. There's no reason you have to use this font. Font Awesome will work. Any nerd font that's patched will work. This is the one that I picked. There's no particular reason you need to do it. Also, I have a standard um, serif font here, Product Sans. It's just sort of a standard text font that we'll use when we're not using the glyphs. So go ahead and install either one of those, uh, or so you just need a font to enable glyphs and ideally a font to render the rest of the text on your polybar with. Uh, once you have that, uh, all you need to actually do is copy basically from the config. Uh, you're gonna want to copy the font settings uh, right up here at the very top of your config. You'll have uh, a number of fonts listed. You can see what mine looks like. I, I sort of spent a lot of time just trying to limit it to only two fonts, a sort of standard serif font and a glyph font to enable icons. But the way this works, is you're going to type in the name of the font. Uh, and then the next thing here we have is the size of the icons. Have it set to 18. You'll probably be quite a bit smaller if you're using the one from the Arch Linux repo. And then the next section here is going to be the positioning of the icon. So if I were to, for example, change the size to eight, save the changes, you'll see all of our icons get very, very, very tiny. And if I were to start to mess with the, uh, this is the horizontal position of the font. If I were to set that to 10, you can see they go back to normal size, but they're shoved way down onto the polybar. Um, so between these two values, you should be able to get all of the fonts very well aligned on your actual polybar. Um, for what I am using, the settings 18 and 4 work just about perfectly. Uh, from there, the next thing we need to do is actually put this uh, module somewhere onto our polybar. Uh, so you can see right here, uh, I have it set on the right side of my polybar, which has it displayed right over here. Um, all you're gonna need to do is come down to module left, module center, module right, and pick a spot where you wanna put it. If I wanna throw it in the center of my polybar, that's easy to do as well. It's no big deal, throw it wherever you feel like throwing it. Um, I sort of nested it in here with all of these other sort of modules that I have on my polybar. So I'm gonna stick it probably right there. Uh, from there, we can actually go right down to the bottom of our config and right above the final settings, we can just paste in the polybar module. So come back over to the GitHub page one more time. And this bit right here, module slash YT, custom script interval 1800 is going to have everything that you need in Orbital in order to get it to work. Come back over, paste that bad boy in, and we shouldn't really need to edit at anything. Assuming that you put all the same files in the same location that I recommended they do, the only thing you'll need to do is edit the username here. By default, it's gonna be set to Mac, my username. Uh, put whatever your username is right there, and then you should be all set to go ahead and run it. Uh, and you can see now it's no longer pulling data from my personal YouTube channel, it's pulling data from that other channel we talked about. So that's it, that's pretty cool. Let's talk a little bit more about the script. Uh, the first thing that stands to reason to mention is that you can store these files wherever you want in case that wasn't super obvious. So I actually don't keep these files in my polybar directory, I keep them in a different .scripts directory that I have. So that's pretty easy. Uh, the other thing that we should probably talk about is uh, the refreshing on the script. So by default, uh, this interval is set to 1800 uh, and this value is in seconds, I believe. So by default, this is gonna refresh the number up here once every 30 minutes. You can set this interval to whatever you want. You could set it to a second if you want. I should advise you against that. I tried that when I was testing it, not because I really wanted it to refresh every second, but I just wanted to see, you know, if it would. Uh, and it will, but I encountered a lot of issues with hitting the limit of requests that you're able to do with the Google API. Now, in theory, the limit is well over what we should have been hitting. It's like 1800 or something refreshes per minute you're allowed to do when I looked on the data. But for whatever reason, when I set it to refresh every second, uh, it just started giving me 401 error. You probably could set this to anything five minutes 
or higher. Uh, so you could set the interval to 300. That should probably be fine. Just don't set it to like one or two or three or four or five seconds. That's probably going to be a bad idea. Um, the other thing to mention is the number isn't super accurate. So let me take a look here at my YouTube channel. You can see here uh, the number of subscribers that it is displaying is 5.47K, which is exactly what's being rendered up here, 5.47K. This is how YouTube renders that number. The issue is if I come over to, let's say my YouTube studio login, that is not actually the accurate number. There's 5,473. Uh, is it a big issue? No, but apparently when YouTube, when this YouTube API is pulling data, it's pulling it from sort of the rounded number that's displayed on your channel. Once you have over a certain amount, like I think once you have over a thousand subscribers, it just starts rounding it instead of displaying a precise number. So if that's a big issue for you, which I don't imagine it would be for most people, you know, if you're actually trying to like jerk off watching the uh, subscriber count grow on your channel, just use Social Blade. That'll work better. It'll give you a real time uh, version of it. No judgment here. Do what makes you happy. But for what this is, just a little module that sort of displays your current subscriber number that's great uh the whole reason i wanted this is a while ago i was making videos i crossed 5,000 subscribers and i didn't even notice because i wasn't paying that much attention and i was like oh damn that sucks i mentioned it in a video several videos after it actually happened and i felt bad about it um so this is i think a really good solution for that for just sort of a general bird's eye view of what's going on with the health of your channel as far as the health of your channel relates to the actual number of people subscribed to it which who knows if your channel ever just doubles in size overnight or something you'll know about it with this uh so now let's talk about the script uh you might notice if you go to the github page this is actually a fork of a different script that a guy made uh howcode.org master so let's uh, come over to the script there you can sort of see uh, what, what happened there. I'm not a developer by trade, so it shouldn't surprise anyone uh, that I'm sort of working off of work that someone else did. Uh, if we take a look at the script, we can see pretty easily what's going on. So let's actually take a look at uh, my version of the script, just because that's the one that we actually ended up using. Uh, and I did make a few changes to make this work a little bit better. So uh, basically we have one variable here, which is the username of the YouTube channel. And you can see here, we input the username of the, of the YouTube channel, and it's going to put it right down here into this sort of URL that we're using to get this data. And that's sort of how the YouTube API works is you put in this URL, HTTP, Google API slash YouTube V3 channels, parts, statistics uh, for username. Uh, and what this is going to do is give you a whole bunch of data, uh, which you can see then is we're able to parse the data basically just by selecting different categories through the data. So if you look at it, it's basically like a little chart, like we'll have items is the header. And then underneath that, there'll be a few different options. You can go into the statistics for the YouTube channel. And then under that, there'll be a subscriber count. So that's basically what we're doing. We're pulling down basically a database in some format. It's not really a database. But I, is it JSON? I don't want to say that for sure, but that seems like a pretty good guess. Uh, and then we're just parsing that database to pull out the subscriber count and printing it straight to the command line. Uh, the only other variable we have is the YouTube API key. Uh, originally, uh, the script just wanted you to paste in your API key in plain text. I don't think that's the best way to do it. Again, at the end of the world, if somebody gets your API key, you can just create a new one really easily and there's not really anything dangerous they can do with it. They just might be able to put it in their own apps and run out your number of requests super quickly. But anyways, what we did there is just sort of replace that standard variable with this bit right here, uh, which is basically gonna open up a file uh, and you can link to the file wherever you want. Uh, you can see here I sorted my Dropbox. And if we go into that YouTube file, it's literally nothing but the API key. That's how you want to keep it. You don't want to put any headers, any titles, anything else, just the API key, one line, no spacing, nothing. Save that as a file and then add the link to it here. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're telling Python to read that file and then put it into this variable API key and just read the file like we're inputting that as one line of text, which is exactly what it does. So you can see here uh, in the final URL, we're using the username here, Mackenzie G. Chriswell, uh, and we're using the API key that we linked from this file. And that's everything that we need to do it. Then if we were to just run this script on the command line, so we do dot slash dot script slash sub dot py, you see all it's gonna do is just print out the subscriber count. Uh, and then what we're doing in Polybar is we're just throwing an icon in front of it and having it refresh every 30 minutes. So that's pretty simple. But that's about it for this video, everybody. This is the fourth time I've tried to record this outro, so I'm just gonna end it no matter what happens here. If you're looking for a VPN, check out PureVPN. And ciao. See you in the next video.